basic principles of ultrasound. In this presentation, we'll discuss the definition of ultrasound, key concepts that are necessary to understand medical ultrasound, the creation of an ultrasound image, the ultrasound appearance of different tissues, and key machine settings for venous access. Ultrasound waves are sound waves at higher frequencies than are detectable by human hearing, typically greater than 20 kHz. Medical ultrasound uses very high frequency sound waves in the range of 1 to 20 MHz. The higher the frequency, the greater the tissue definition, but tissue penetration is reduced as frequency is increased. There are two key concepts in understanding ultrasound. The first is the piezoelectric effect. Piezo is derived from the Greek word for squeeze or press. Piezoelectricity refers to the charge that accumulates in certain solids in response to mechanical stress. Conversely, when an electric field is placed across a slice of a piezoelectric material, the material contracts or expands. If the electric field is reversed, the effect on the material is reversed. If the electric field keeps reversing, the material alternately contracts and expands so a rapidly alternating field causes the material to vibrate. In an ultrasound probe, a rapidly alternating electric field is passed across an array of crystals, causing them to vibrate and emit a high frequency sound wave. When the current is switched off, reflected sound waves, or echoes, cause the crystals to vibrate, producing electricity. This electrical signal is then processed by the ultrasound machine to produce an image. The second key concept in understanding ultrasound is acoustic impedance, which describes the ability of sound to penetrate a material. Acoustic impedance is related to the density of the material and the speed of sound in the material. The exact fraction of incident sound which is transmitted or reflected depends on how different the two materials on each side of a boundary are. The greater the difference in impedance, the more sound will be reflected rather than transmitted. Air and water have very different impedances, so that a beam of ultrasound hitting a water surface is almost entirely reflected away, and only a small amount enters the water. Because of the impedance difference between air and skin, a water-based gel is used to act as a coupling medium and help match the impedances. To illustrate the concept further, Consider that marine mammals can communicate over long distances through water when no interface is present. However, a submerged swimmer is largely isolated from noises above the water surface due to reflection of sound at the air-water interface. To summarise these two fundamental principles, the piezoelectric effect describes how substances, including crystals, vibrate within an alternating electric field, producing high-frequency sound waves. Differences between acoustic impedance of different tissues cause reflection of ultrasound waves at tissue interfaces. Different body layers, such as fat, muscle and many body organs, have very similar acoustic impedances, so that most of the beam will pass from one layer into the next, and only a small fraction is reflected. In practice, this is not a problem. In fact, the imaging technique relies on it. To obtain a reasonable image, with good resolution of an interface between two layers, around 1% of a beam should be reflected, leaving a substantial portion to continue on to further reflections. Each layer of tissue in the body produces a separate reflection of the ultrasound signal. In the original type of scanner, these reflections were simply displayed on the screen of a cathode-ray oscilloscope. This results in a trace like the one shown below, where the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents the amplitude of the reflection, that is, how strongly the sound is reflected. Each layer producing a reflection shows up as a peak on the trace. This gives rise to the name of the technique, an amplitude or A-scan. The diagram shown 
shows an A-scan which could result from the layers in the eye. The amplitude of the peaks depend on the difference in acoustic impedance between the tissues on each side of each boundary. In a B-scan, the amplitude of each returning signal controls the brightness of a spot which represents the reflection, the B for brightness giving rise to the name B-scan. So a single pulse of ultrasound passing into a series of tissues will give rise to a series of spots, with the brightness of the spots corresponding to the amplitude of the reflection from different layers. The largest amplitude gives rise to a spot with the greatest brightness, here shown almost white. The smallest amplitude gives rise to a spot which is almost black, and intermediate amplitudes give various shades of grey. The area that does not give rise to any spike, for example in the eye, the aqueous and the vitreous, will appear black. The corneal spike and the retinal spike in this image have the biggest amplitude and therefore appear nearly white. In modern ultrasound scanners, an array of crystals in the ultrasound probe each act as individual emitters and receivers. The signals from each crystal are processed and constructed into the final real-time image on the screen. Two distinct types of reflection occur that give an ultrasound scan its characteristic image. Specular reflection is responsible for the bright appearance of fibrous structures such as tendons and of boundaries between different tissues. It occurs when the sound wave meets a distinct surface that is significantly larger than the wavelength of the ultrasound. The amount of sound that is reflected at the boundary between two different tissues depends on how marked the difference is in their acoustic impedance. Scattering gives rise to the characteristic texture of the image seen within soft tissue. Scattering occurs at the small, subtle boundaries that exist within tissues. At these, small amounts of energy are absorbed and retransmitted in all directions, as if from a point source, in the manner that loosely resembles a ped ball dropped into a pond. Muscle tissue is dark or hypoechoic on ultrasound. It is normally well demarcated because the muscle sheaths have high acoustic impedance. The substance of the muscle itself is usually marbled due to streaks of fat within it, like a sirloin steak. Bone appears as a particularly bright line due to the dramatic difference in acoustic impedance between bone and soft tissue. High frequency ultrasound does not penetrate bone effectively and therefore the screen is generally black deep to the bony cortex. Fluid, be it blood, effusion or cyst, is generally black, that is, anechoic, although thicker fluids such as pus can be bright or dark. Blood clot, on the other hand, is relatively dense and has quite a strong echo. It's important to look for the presence of clot in any vessel that has been considered as a target for ultrasound-guided venous access. Finally, we'll consider the two key machine settings that are used in ultrasound-guided venous access. A depth indicator bar is a standard feature of the ultrasound display. As tissue depth increases, resolution decreases. As the amount of sound energy absorbed is increased, the more tissue the wave passes through, and reflections become progressively weaker. Reducing the depth setting has the effect of appearing to magnify the size of structures on the screen, while increasing the depth setting diminishes them. The second control that you will use frequently when using ultrasound for vascular access is the gain control. The gain control increases or decreases the amplification of the received echo signal, which results in an increase or decrease in brightness of the image at all depths. There is an overall gain control and near and far gain controls which alter the amplification across elements of the image only. In summary, 
Medical ultrasound uses very high frequency sound waves generated by piezoelectric crystals placed in a rapidly alternating electric field. Ultrasound probes, also called transducers, use arrays of individually emitting and receiving crystals to build up images. The intensity of reflected sound waves depends on differing acoustic impedances at tissue interfaces. Ultrasound resolution is reduced with increasing tissue depth due to absorption of sound energy. And depth and gain controls are key to obtaining a satisfactory image to allow ultrasound-guided venous access.